The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, squeezably soft host. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. Well, we opened up today. Um, I thought we'd roll over. I, I wasn't very bullish. Uh, I thought that the best they could do is hold the market up uh, the first couple of days this week. So I was going to add a lot of short positions again on Wednesday. We'll have to see how today turns out. Anyway, uh, up uh, about uh, 15 points earlier in the morning, uh, right after the open, uh, down about 20. We were down about 30 on the S&P cash. And again, uh, if you're selling your funds expect the worst price of the day when it does get sold. I do suspect that we have some fund selling, some what they call outflows. Um, and we brought up the, that reason, I think, Thursday and Friday. Uh, and uh, it, it just seemed like something that would probably have to happen. Uh, if you've uh, got an extra 8% taxes due this year, because you're in a miserably high tax state like California or New York or New Jersey or any of the rest of the confiscatory states that believes that the state is above all individuals. And they both mostly think that way, at least the way I believe. They, I think they think. Uh, anyway, if you're in a massively uh, confiscatory tax state, um, you don't get to write that off anymore. And this is the first year that a lot of people have probably woken up to that. I'm figuring there's going to be a little selling for a little while. Um, and, of course, uh, probably an exodus to more states. We've already seen a lot of people move into uh, Nevada, Texas, uh, Florida. Um, if you want to stay up north, you can go to New Hampshire. But uh, eh, the escape from high-tax states, probably just starting. Um, but uh, you never know. But uh, I think the impact on the market, uh, I've been thinking about it like this. I asked Steve to call his buddy at Trim Tabs. Maybe he'll have something on that tomorrow. I'd been speculating that on Friday, but I thought maybe they'd hold this market up. Uh, but anyway, uh, don't be surprised to see them push the market a little higher at the end of the day, because there'll be funds that have to sell and some that have to buy. And generally, the thing to, uh, to do if you're in a fund is make sure that the people that sell get the worst price of the day and your fund uh, gets to buy at the high of the day. Don't ask me why it doesn't really favor individuals. Somehow I have a feeling that they really don't respect their customers. But that's the way it works. But uh, I think this could continue on. And of course, if you don't have a very good start to March, uh, this could continue on through April 15th. Although, eh, it's a little late, isn't it? So maybe, the, what, the 10th, 11th? You could have uh, uh, some kind of weight on the market for tax selling. Uh, we brought up something else on Friday. And right after the bell, the news actually hit. We'll be uh, talking about that after we do a little history. Uh, but that's it. Now, uh, the, we've been chronicling uh, for maybe the last two weeks the incredible light volumes of so many uh, individual stocks. Well, we don't have light volume today. We're doing 4.9 billion shares as we start the day. So there was some volume. Uh, we did go down and test uh, the previous low, which is just about uh, to, to, uh, from last week, which is just about four points lower than we're at right now. So the question is, do we close uh, above or below 2778? Um, we're about four points higher. Uh, you got fun buying. 
Uh, it's not going to be this the instant rollover and turning into a burst of flames. Um, but uh, I think by Wednesday, any of that money that was here to buy is probably going to be used up. So you've got probably a, a little bit of, of bias that is going to go away. So if this continues to do best, go sideways, uh, probably in for a wicked March. What is it? March comes in like a lamb? What's that saying? I can't remember it right now. Someone's got to bring it up. Um, out uh, In like a lamb, out by like a lion? Is that it? Or in like a lion, out like a lamb? I can't ever remember that. Comes in like an emu. Okay. Don't know about that one. Uh, goes out like a taper. Okay. We've got uh, our engineer who is... Uh, I guess thinking about doing stand-up, but you never know. Uh, give me a call, 877-927-6648. Email me at path at tfnn.com. And, of course, you can always put a message in the den. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. On this day in 1977, the first Cray-1 supercomputer is shipped to Los Alamos National Laboratories in New Mexico. The supercomputer, which costs $19 million, will be used to design sophisticated weapon systems. The system is a cylindrical tower, 7 feet tall, 9 feet in diameter, weighs about 5.5 tons. The machine used so much heat that it required built-in Freon-based refrigerating systems. It required its own electrical substation to power it at a cost of about $35,000 a month. Uh, and uh, yes, everybody needs a Cray. Now, my first interaction with one, I heard and read about them, lusted in my heart for one, me and Jimmy Carter both. Uh, and uh, we had uh, <laughs> our first interaction around 1990, 1985. I want to say it's 1985, 86. Uh, went downtown because they, uh, the IRS had bought two of them, and they were uh, having its Bon Voyage party. Uh, but they decided in their infinite wisdom to hook it up themselves. Uh, one of the towers, uh, when turned on, instantly melted because they didn't hook up uh, the liquid nitrogen uh, cooling to one of them and instantly destroyed one. I think it was about, even then... Um, was, I don't forget, millions of dollars. Um, but kind of interesting that the way that they were all set up, you could put them in the middle of a room and a lot of people wouldn't think about them. Uh, later when I started hitting the road and going uh, uh, to all the different places, it was amazing how many Marriott's and high-end hotels had uh, sitting areas that looked almost identical to the Cray system, if you ever see a picture of them. It does look like you can see something like one of these in a mid-70s, 80s um, uh, hotel or convention center. And I think that uh, some architects saw it and said, you know what, I'm going to put those in. It's just uh, kind of a space-age looking thing, uh, and uh, we're in there. But uh, I got to watch, watch one melt in about five seconds and go up and a magic puff of that white magic smoke when computers go bad. Craying bad? Breaking bad? There's got to be something in there. Maybe our new stand-up comedian can come up with something. Be back in a minute. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. And uh, when we uh, left on Friday, we were talking a bit about malls. In fact, we had uh, someone in that leasing business uh, email in on Friday uh, to uh, correct me. But I, it just a lot of times it's kind of funny that you can see in the charts uh, that there's some bad news coming. Stocks already starting to re uh, act to it, even though the news is not out. But I think this came out about 6 o'clock on Friday night. And uh, a uh, retail apocalypse part due um, after the bell on Friday night um, when we saw a major change, let's Gap, JCPenney, Victoria's Secret, Foot Locker, all announcing massive closures for the year. Total uh, death of more than 465 stores over the last few days. Uh, some pay less shoe stores, some 2,000 locations, are uh, going to close. And uh, I just don't think it gets any better, which puts a real problem on retail uh, locations. Maybe those will go back to being uh, the... Uh, the uh, kind of, uh, maybe they'll make them into condos where all those places are sitting now. Who knows? But uh, I don't know. Is the thought that brick and mortar never comes back or certainly doesn't come back or are they all just going to be food courts, which at least everything around my, uh, our area is uh, turning into uh, another Subway, another Starbucks, another uh, food, you know, stuff that you literally don't want uh, coming to you in an Amazon box. Uh, but I uh, thought that was very interesting to see that after the bell on Friday. You can give me a call at 877-927-6648. You can email me at pat at tfnn.com. And of course, as always, you can put a message in the den. Um, so let's go ahead and start looking at some of the stocks. Now, the one that scared me the most this morning when I was looking at it um, was the IYF. Just because generally when this thing looks rather weak, you're in big trouble. Uh, and this one is, uh, when you want to talk about light volume uh, or light energy off this uh, December 26 low, the IYF has been it. And the last two weeks have been horrific for volume. You did get back into the uh, December 3rd high. That was 120.59. That had uh, 640,000 shares. 
You got into it with uh, 435,000 shares. So it wasn't quite half the volume at the high uh, for Friday, but man, was, was the energy significantly off. I've got a 1.9 on the way down to that December 26 low on my power law vector indicator and a 1.3 on the way up. So energy was off by about 40% uh, as we went back higher. So, eh, going to just kind of look at it and keep an eye on what's going on uh, and not suspect that we don't have um, some kind of problem that we just haven't been able to diagnose just quite yet. Uh, we'll go through the rest of them. Um, when we saw Adobe and some of these other ones, we've been talking about these for a while. Um, ADBE, uh, just up here on nothing. Uh, you were looking for something about for uh, 8.7 million shares. That was the uh, October 13th high, uh, 261.89. Uh, you got into it with about half that volume, went back, retested the low uh, on December 24th. That was a test of the previous low of November 20th. That was uh, 6.2 million shares, the 3 million shares. So you had a great setup to buy Adobe, and then you had nothing all the way up. In fact, it got worse uh, in the last week, week and a half. Uh, you got the um, rug pull today, got up to 267, uh, and instantly reverted and blown away everything back to the 11th of February now, uh, where everybody was just kind of drifting up into these pre previous high highs. But it, certainly there was a level of euphoria in this market, and certainly that continues. Uh, again, I'm not so surprised that we don't get at least some kind of dip buyers out here uh, and especially in the funds uh, they'll sell in the morning and they will buy in the afternoon so don't get too far ahead of yourself on uh, the end of the market uh, being here any time now uh, but it will continue to be problematic I suspect for the next few days I don't think the selling is over uh, other um, stocks. Again, we were talking about all the mall closures. Uh, you had a fairly decent test of a Crombie and Fitch. That's the November 29th high, $22.17, 27.4 million shares. Got into it with 1.7 million shares yesterday. And of course, now you get the reversal today. Uh, volume is not quite picked up yet. But again, uh, off of this December 24th low, uh, the energy's just been... Uh, wispy at best Let's see what else we have out here um breaking previous low is cigna today busting through the december 24th low it doesn't have a lot of volume but it does look like you could go back to this next previous low which is 163.97 low of the day was 171.46 another six or seven points once you get there you also get yet another low which is the march 13th low of last year and that was 163. So this looks like it's probably, in my guess, uh, you got the volume the other day, um, 163.02. Not a lot of juice here. It may stall out for a while, but I don't think there's anything worth buying until you get 163 level. Uh, again, we were talking about some of these property companies. And if you're in retail, or uh, not retail, if you're in residential, things look fairly good. If you're in retail properties, continues to be problematic in a lot of places. Um, Camden Prop uh, uh, Property Trust is going sideways today on no juice. CQP, which is Chenery um, Energy Partners, uh, certainly uh, did break uh, higher on Thursday, had the volume, couldn't hold the high, and then you got a reversal on Friday and another one today to go back and fill the gap up from last week. That was the 27th. But again, I just don't see a great deal going on here that makes any sense. We talked about how most of the railroads were up here on fairly light volume. They're now just going sideways. Um, while we've had kind of an early warning, I suspect, on some stocks today, there are some others still hanging up here with little or no juice. Pushing up a little bit on CSX today on 2 million shares. But again, that's going back into this 8.5 million share high on December 3rd that we have out here. Fitbit, um, also another one. 
uh, that it's got energy or it got volume at high, just didn't have the energy on its way up, kind of rotating off a lot. But again, these uh, those at best look more like they're in a um, trading range than anything else. Uh, to, to, to Four Scout Technologies did break above uh, the previous high, but did not have the volume on Friday. Uh, needed 2 million shares from the September 21st high at 41 bucks. Um, up today on 600,000 shares up. Kind of uh, did that, but again, kind of another little warning sign on a lot of these stocks. Energy was a little bit better on this one, though, uh, up from December 24th. We shall be back. I shall return. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we're back. Um, Adobe's another kind of a big drop off here, big reversal on a handful of these big tech stocks. I've got to keep an eye on those. Anyway, this 161.89 high on October 17th uh, with Adobe. I got tested. That was uh, 8.7 million shares. Got tested with 4.3 million shares on December 3rd. It got back into there with no juice, as we said last week. Big reversal on that, down on 2 million shares so far. Uh, but uh, my guess is you're probably going to see at least a few people try to buy all these dips. Um, 
other stocks uh, out here that look problematic. Harley Davidson uh, going through its February 18th high, that was $37.65 with uh, 2.6 million shares. Uh, did pierce it today uh, to $38.22. Um, so far, 1.2 million shares. So again, it just even this morning, when everybody was trying to run everybody out, there just wasn't a lot there. Now, I do supply, I suspect that a lot of people uh, did short on the way down, and now the market will try to run those guys out. Um, there's a, a good part of uh, one of the uh, um, Harrison Ford movies uh, where he's uh, uh, the, the clue to uh, getting the uh, goblet is uh, only the penitent man will pass. And generally, if you're talking about a very great or big um, downside for a market, it is almost impossible to hold a short position at the highs. They make it absolutely painful, and it also becomes the most profitable. In fact, the biggest trades of all time, uh, number one, uh, inflation adjusted is uh, the short of 1929 by Jesse Livermore, where he made about $300 million. Uh, the short of natural gas in 2006. And I'm sure it was painful for all, but that's it. Uh, what else do we have? What was that? The Temple of Doom? Was this the Temple of Doom? I don't think so. The the uh, Quest for the Holy Grail? Can't remember what that movie was. It had uh, Sean Connery in it, though. Remember that. Uh, ta -ta -ta -ta. Uh, oh, we already looked at the IYF. I want to look at some other ones. Shake Shack. Um, talk about another reversal. This is an IPO. I never understood it. Uh, didn't think it was much different than CMG, although CMG is starting to recover somewhat. You did get into the previous highs. Um, volume was a little bit better on Thursday than you would think, 1.2 million shares. Uh, but again, uh, just not a lot of energy on the way up. Um, this one... Doesn't look as bad as the others, though. Uh, Target had gotten right up uh, to its resistance level, uh, just going kind of sideways today on much, much volume. But going back into the gap of November 20th, that gap down on 21 million shares. On Friday, you had 6.8 million shares. Today, you got 4.4 million shares. So still problematic. Trimble navigation. Let's see if I got some email. I think I got a couple here. We'll get into those in the next segment. Uh, but you can email me, too. Uh, Trimble, uh, going through a couple of its previous highs, uh, you wanted something like 2.4 million shares. Again, not a big turn on these just yet. But, uh, you went to a higher high today, uh, $40.80. You only have 400 or 544,000 shares so far, so still problematic. Um, some of these other retail stocks also look Still very bad. You gap lower on earnings on the 12th of December for Vera Bradley. Symbol on that is VRA. You're back into that gap. Um, so 2.4 on the way down. Friday, 159,000. Today, 94,000. So talk about thin. There just aren't a lot of people diving in. One of the stocks that did break out to higher highs and did have some volume when it did it, uh, was an IPO that I kind of discounted. It, it could have had more volume. It at least had the same, but it's this Yeti Holdings, the uh, cooler manufacturer. I still doubt them highly, but it is held fairly w uh, well. Could look at this one as a reversal signal today. It's not expensive enough for me to short it, though, so that uh, becomes problematic. But eh, a lot of those questionable IPOs now probably... Uh, in the next few days, going to be uh, under a microscope. Anyway, we're at 2785 on the S&P cash, which is off 18, which sounds like a miracle because, of course, we were off 32, uh, and the market just doesn't do that. It just gives you money every single day. All you have to do is put your hand out and take it. Just be long. Just put your hands out and collect all that cash, and you got to make sure that you hold. No selling now. None allowed. Um, what else do we have going on? Uh, questions out here about Microsoft. Uh, as I said, uh, 
Friday and Tom O'Brien show. So they still um, are coming up with new and inventive ideas. And uh, Apple is not, which is why they are in, in the catbird's seat these days. Uh, you could look at this as a little bit of a reversal signal, but not quite the one I think that you're looking for. I kept on thinking that you could get up to 115.72 as the leader in the market. Maybe that's what they do in the next couple of days. They just push this up, hit a few people that are short this stock because it's always been hated. Man, I, I remember this stock in 2000, it was hated. It was hated in 2010. It's hated in 2019. There are a lot of people that just hate Microsoft, and I don't know why. Um, I think it's the equivalent of buying a car from General Motors, and you never change the oil, and the car blows up. And so you always wanted to go and say, you know what, General Motors, you're horrible. You're a horrible company. I didn't change my oil, and the engine blew up. Why is that? And of course, uh, I guess with computers, the thought of any maintenance whatsoever um, is a uh, anathema to the users. I have very little, if any, problems, but I back up everything. I install all my updates. Uh, if I have any problem, I always can go to my last full update and restore everything in about 20, 20 minutes. But eh, everybody drives with no spare. That'd probably be the best way to describe computer users. They drive around with no spare, and then they act all shocked uh, when they get a flat. But that's it. And, of course, that applies to the same thing to uh, motorcyclists, which is uh, there's only two kinds, those that have been down and those that are going down. Same thing with a computer. Those have lost data and those who are going to lose data. So what else do we have going on? Let's go back and look at some of the other ones we were talking about last week. Uh, as we uh, got into it, like uh, uh, we talked about, a lot of these are the same ones. I mean, uh, Caterpillar, I didn't see how that one did today. Uh, but we were bringing this up because it really, uh, on the uh, February 25th, really tested on half, less than half the volume of the December 3rd high, 142.41. Uh, and not much movement out here. Boeing. Uh, was down lower earlier in the day. I think you could make a case that uh, within the next couple of days, uh, if you get this thing to kind of push a little bit higher and then it fails again, the next failure would take you back to 380. We'll be back in a minute. I shall return. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors.
Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And we're back, although I had nodded off. Uh, down uh, 17 points on the S&P cash, down 226 on the uh, Dow. Is that right? Let me refresh this to make sure. Down 240 on the Dow, off uh, 35 on the NASDAQ. Russell, um, pretty much eh, it and the Dow, the weak sister, down 9 tenths of a percent, down uh, almost 15 points. Uh, so we're going to have, a, this is a great day, a certainly a teachable moment, as they like to say, and that is going to be the stocks that can actually rally uh, off this bounce and the ones that cannot. So uh, going to be very interesting watching the candles on a great deal of the stocks out today. Darlington restaurants, or Darlington ingredients, Darlington. Uh, we've got uh, this one that spiked the previous high, didn't do much. Uh, energy off this low was ridiculously light. That's December 26. DAR is the symbol on that one. FCF, which is First Commonwealth Financial. Uh, again, these financial stocks looked very weak uh, coming in over the last couple of days. Uh, the IYF, one of the worst of the offenders. Um, November 19th on First Commonwealth which is $14.26 with 800,000 shares, got in with 376,000 shares on February 25th and has been kind of coming back off. Certainly he had a lot of energy in the lows that never got tested. So that could get down 20% or more. I uh, got a question to look at G, the GHPH, BPH, what is that? G W P H. Okay, almost can read the handwriting on that. Um, this gapped up last week. It's back up to the previous high, and it does not have the volume today either. Uh, you did spike it with some fairly decent volume of two and a half uh, million shares on the 27th. Uh, that was on earnings. The next few days, the volumes really dropped off. You're now back up into that uh, 2.3 million share high of September 27th, 179.65. You went to 182.18 today. Uh, does not, well, you could. You could close back below that one. 176.68 is the last tick I see. Um, that would be a valid sell signal. Um, energy was a little bit better than almost all the other stocks off this December 27th. So I think that there are much better fish in the sea to go after. If you're going to drop your line in, Ingersoll Rand, uh, triple top, uh, light volume. You were doing about 1.7 million shares on two previous highs around 1.7 and 106. Got to 107.64 on February 25th. Did so with 1.25 million shares. Um, more volume on Friday, a little less today. And again, I suspect what we're going to have see is a little bit of action going sideways over the next couple of days, maybe Wednesday, we see the last little uh, effort to hold this market up as the end of fund buying comes in. 
Uh, Merck and Company, um, no volume on, a, on pushing higher today. The December 4th high came in at $80.19, uh, 21.4 million shares. On Friday, came into that high with 10.2 million shares. Today, 5 million shares as you go into a higher high, which is no good. Another stock that we've been talking about for the last week, banging around at highs with no energy, is Oracle. Uh, the November 19th high at 52.54 had just under 20 million shares, got into it with 13 million shares on February 25th. Been kind of going sideways out here. A little bit of a reversal signal today with 10 million shares so far. Restoration Hardware, um, been watching this one for a while. It uh, was uh, almost pulled the trigger a day or so or two ago. It just has a massive 10-day short interest, uh, which reminds me that I need to look at that. I wanted to see what this one's doing. Let's we'll see if anything directly changed, because we do have the new readouts from Friday on the bi-monthly short. Oh, still 10 days to cover. So eventually... That'll go to like five days to cover. And uh, when you see that, uh, even though it's got kind of high short interest, that's probably where the wheels will fall off of it. Although it looks like one of the easiest shorts in the market uh, is a problematic. Again, you can give me a call. I still have plenty of time for the last segment at 877-927-6648. Uh, Triple uh, Top and Stanley uh, Black & Decker. I think we brought this up a couple of times. Still looks weak. You were looking for 2.6 uh, million shares. Got into that high February 25th with uh, 1.15 million shares. It's rolled over. Uh, today, you've actually got a bounce. And this one is probably the closest to what I'm looking for. Uh, what you want to see is a close over uh, a nine-day moving average or a three-by-three three displaced moving average. And then the next pull underneath that short away, and you're probably looking fairly decent uh, opportunity for this retest of the 115.02 January 22nd low. That's actually one of the better looking ones. And uh, if you get a push up in the next day or two and the volume is this, drops out, uh, this makes me think that puts may be really a beautiful thing. Uh, what do we have out here? Okay, so we're still off 17, 18 points on the S&P cash. Okay, uh, t -t 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 we looked at Target, we looked at Trimble, looked at a handful. Let's go back even a little farther. I think that was 26 uh, to see what else was on some of my lists at these Casey General Store. Um, this thing was banking around the highs. Uh, this one tested uh, a 1 million share high on December 12th with a half a million shares on February 26th. You have closed back below it. But certainly, any little uh, bounce now on light volume and the next close under the nine-day moving average would be interesting. Let's take a look at LABU, which is the biotech stocks. Uh, this one had been coming up on very light volume. Uh, you did have a big push on, uh, on a lot of stocks and earnings on Friday. You did have 4.4 .4 million shares into 3.6 million shares. But again, even these stocks with energy at the highs uh, that came up with lighter energy, all of these things, are reversing back into the trading range. We've been talking about this for the last week. MasterCard uh, back up and above its previous uh, high of 225.10. That was October 1st. Came in with 7 million shares. On Friday, you hit it with 3 million shares. Today, uh, you reversed on about 1.2. Eight so far. I think you have maybe two and a half by the end of the day. Uh, a lot of these stocks just look like they want to come back to a support or previous support. In the case of MasterCard, would be about that 210 level. So there's some nice money to be made here on just uh, a normal retracement of uh, this last big leg higher. I shall return.
I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And I had to come back. I had to take care of something very quickly. Anyway, we're uh, going to wrap up this show here in this segment. And uh, pretty quiet day. I think a lot of people are waiting to see if this actually is what we thought it was. Still down 16 points on the S&P cash. And uh, yeah, 5.4 million shares. So again, a lot of volume on the way down. Not much on the way up so far today. But we still need to wait. And yeah, I had to run. Still out of breath. So uh, what else do we have happening here before the end? Let's just take a quick gander. Uh, gold's still off $10.50. Uh, when I looked at my sector, oscillators still think that your low comes in probably Wednesday or Thursday. Uh, but we'll talk more about that tomorrow. Um, the rest of the what's going on out here, just not much really. Um, Wanted to look at a few other stocks. Wanted to look at Nike, another one that had been breaking up at highs. Certainly, this was uh, another reversal. Maybe not enough so far today, but in the next couple of days, you want to watch this. September 21st, that's uh, $85.82 with 14 million shares. 
got into it with 6.3 million shares on Friday. Now it reverses today. You got 5 million shares already. So pretty good opportunity to actually have more volume than you did at the previous high and a little reversal signal. Again, probably going to take a few days for these things to come back and start on the sell side, but you've gotten your first giant warning of a market that probably has topped out. But uh, they're not going to let it die easily. As I said earlier, only the penitent man will pass. I think that's about it for today. Where's my music? Here. Yeah, that's it. Anyway, um, that's it. Larry Pesavi.